Hello Tubesters, it's Gav and welcome to another one of my videos. Yes, it is yet another Harry Potter, uh, another Harry Potter review. Uh, for all those getting sick and tired of Harry Potter, uh, this is the last figure I've got for a while. Um, I've got some other work to be getting on with. Uh, but uh, as I say, I'm painting it, although I collect these figures myself, for my own collection, um, this last three or four figures I've been showing you, uh, I'm actually selling on uh, to actually fund the same figures all over again to collect. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is obviously Rubius Hagrid and his faithful boarhound Fang. Uh, it's a figure I've wanted to do for a while. Uh, Hagrid's one of those figures in the Harry Potter universe that's from a painting side of it is 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 great, you know. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't bring him out in some other bits because he's often in stoat and rabbit skin uh, cloaks and fur, you know, uh, jackets and things like that. Um, and although you might think, you know, all brown, you know, you've got all the brown there, it's, it's, you can get a lot out of it, you know, it's, it's, I'm looking for, I've always wanted this particular figure and I was just waiting for, you know, as usual for the price to be at the right, uh, the right amount before I pulled the trigger, so to speak. Anyway, that's enough waffling on that bit. Let's actually uh, bring the figure to your attention and uh, we'll take a closer look. As you can see, it's a one piece cast. Let's see if I can get some more light on the subject, or that probably bleach it out a bit. Again, detail for the resin, the actual resin detail is fantastic. And again, from a painter's perspective, you know, there's lots to go out there. Again, these these bits of uh, roughness on the casting, little blips here. Um, if you can get one of those, uh, let me just actually get one out here. I think this is a, a UMP one, but you know, get a get a, a sanding a sponge. You can get them in packs of different uh, different ones, and they'll contour to the uh, to the jackets. You can get obviously. I haven't got any actually on, on my desk, but you can get what we call thin. Thin sticks as well, which are like uh, the same same material, but you know very thin, and they'll get in your grooves as well. Uh, facial details again, and the hair is fantastic. Now you have got the usual, not under his chin, thank goodness for a change. Uh, but yeah, here we go. We've got these here, which you'll have to again par away with your scalpel. Um, and they're all they're always a, a blooming nightmare and you've got to <laughs> even though you once you do a few you know they're there it's it's like when i did minerva mcgonagall i missed i completely missed the one under her chin um and it was only when i was actually uh just just what you know giving them a scrub with a toothbrush and some soapy water that i actually realized so again under the chat you know they're not always in the easiest places to 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 get to bit of flash around the legs and, and mould lines again but that isn't obviously too much of a problem it's always these things which are always a nightmare and then obviously par them away from uh, from the feet you could you know I mean he's a solid figure you could uh, I know uh, Ian uh, Ian Aiken he he always drills his out I, I tend to I tend not to only because a lot of the ones I've done so far the one piece ones are fine but the female figures particularly, the ankles are so tiny, I just can't be bothered with the, the, of, of the thought of snapping them. So I, I just I just put them all on the, the slotter bases and you just have to make them as good as you can do, you know, with a bit of green stuff. Um, but no, I'm really really liking this this figure. I'm, I'm, you know, there isn't too much to clean up, which as you've noticed on a couple of the others, we're there was a fairly lengthy cleaning process obviously you've still got your mould line to to clear here but again uh, to be honest with you get get yourself your, your scalpel I use a let's get him out here I use a Swan Morton I have got some of the rounded blades as well uh, I always use a if if not a completely fresh one one that's hardly seen any any usage give it give it a gentle scrape away and then um, you know, get in there with your sanding stick. But some of the smaller ones, I even use my metal files on them. Uh, you know, and again, just give them a gentle clean up with a with a sanding stick afterwards. 
So there's our Rubius Hagrid. Let's have a look at Fang. Fang's a two piece. Uh, it seems to be a fairly clean put together. I keep, I kept, um, he, he, he looked a bit small. Um, and I put him next to other figures. It's always a bit harder when they're in two pieces and you're trying to hold them, you know, they're not exactly stuck on the same base. Um, I thought, I did think he looked a bit, a bit small for what Fang looks like in the, in the films anyway, but I don't know, maybe it's just me. So obviously you're going to have to put a bit of, probably put a bit of uh, Vallejo plastic putty, uh, Tamiya plastic putty or any other, any other putty you desire uh, in that, but it, you know, get that in there, give it a gentle rub down again with your sanding sticks and it'll be good to go. There is obviously a bit of mould lines running down the legs and you've got this blob on the top of his head. But again, the the face is nice. It's got some more of this pink stuff. Let me just see if it'll flick out because this this can be a nightmare. This pink stuff. It's I can't work it out if it's part of the moulding process or it's actually where the resin. I believe for me, it's almost like where the resin hasn't hasn't mixed properly. And I've had a couple of three figures where, including the superhero figures, where it's quite a soft spongy type material and it's not going to come out under the camera but that that's a nightmare because you're, you're sanding it and if it's if it's embedded in the resin itself it actually moves around you know and you've got to try and hike it out you know and then refill so bear in mind so if you see some of that stuff do try and remove it with your with your scalpel because it it, it might well cause you problems later on when you're painting so there's Fang's little face again. With his, uh, you can just see all that drool, <laughs> drool hanging off his mouth. So, oh, just one other thing. I'll bring uh, Dolores Umbridge that I'm working in, working on, into the shop for a minute, just so you can get a scale. It's only going to be a rough one because obviously he's not in his base. But that's uh, that's Hagrid next to one of his art. Well, I wouldn't say arch enemy, but the. In the book, she tries to get to get him uh, chucked out of the school, and then attacks him with stunning spells. Oh, I know my stuff. <laughs> Fifty-two-year-old bloke. Eh? <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you very much for stopping by and taking a look at this review of uh, Rubius Hagrid and Fang the Boarhound. So you take care of yourselves. And we will see each other very, very soon on another video. Cheers.